During Aegon's conquest of Westeros, he and his sisters Visenya and Rhaenys were able to successfully win over each and every kingdom all except for one, Dorne. Princess Maria Martell, the ruler of Dorne, stood true to her house words, unbowed, unbent, unbroken, and be the only ones to resist Aegon's rule and get away with it. Today on the Raven's Hall, we will go over the aftermath that followed and the conflict that ensued over the first Dornish War. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and leave a like. Let's get into it. In the fourth year after his crowning and conquest, Aegon launched a new invasion on Dorne with the goal of completing his quest to unify all seven kingdoms. The first assault would be led by Rhaenys Targaryen and her dragon Meraxes as she burned Planky Town while on her way to Sunspear, the seat of House Martell. At the same time, Aegon himself and Harlan Tyrell, who was Warden of the South at that point, marched a huge army through the area known as the Prince's Past and faced heavy resistance. Aegon's bastard half-brother and Hand of the King, Oris Baratheon, also led a separate number of men through the Bone Way and found himself in a trap. Many of his men were killed while he himself and a dozen other lords were captured by the Lord Will of Castle Will, also known as the Widow Lover. Aegon and his men would march to Sunspear and took several castles and killed many lords along the way. When he arrived at the castle, he found his sister Rhaenys already there and the castle completely abandoned along with Maria Martell. Aegon declared victory and assumed his rivals all fled out of fear of defeat. He named Lord John Rosby the new Castellan of Sunspear and Warden of the Sands and ordered Lord Tyrell to put down any resistance that may arise. Aegon and his men then departed back through the Prince's Pass to return to King's Landing. However, shortly after returning, Dorne rose in rebellion and took back most of the castles Aegon and his sisters had taken while slaughtering all the men he left to garrison. Maria Martell was among the numbers and also reappeared from hiding as she successfully retook Sunspear. The siege resulted in Lord Rosby's capture, and Maria then ordered her men to toss him out of the highest window in the tower. Rosby would not survive the fall, and the axe would later be known as the Defenestration of Sunspear. Harlan Tyrell and his men were also never seen or heard from again after the new rebellion from Dorne. Fighting continued for the next three years and grew increasingly bloody. In the year 7 AC, Lord Will of Castle Will agreed to ransom back Lord Oris and his men to Aegon for their weight in gold after holding them as hostages for three years. To make sure they would never fight against Dorne again, Lord Will had each hostage's sword hand removed, making Oris known as Oris One Hand thereafter. Aegon retaliated with Beleriand, intent with revenge, and burned all of Will's castles and keeps. Will would survive for the time being by hiding under the tunnels and caves beneath his fortress. Bloodshed would continue for another three years, with Aegon and Dorne's forces constantly striking back and forth at each other at numerous castles and locations. In the year 10 AC, Rhaenys would fly to the seat of House Uller at Castle Hellholt. During her attack, a scorpion from the castle's highest tower fired an iron bolt directly into the eye of Meraxes, shooting her and Rhaenys out of the sky. Meraxes destroyed the tower and part of the wall during her fall and crashed to the ground. Rhaenys' body was never found, with some theories suggesting she fell to her death from the sky or was crushed beneath Meraxes on the ground. Other theories suggest she survived, only to be captured and endlessly tortured in the dungeons of Hellholt. Rhaenys' sudden death enraged and upset Aegon and Visenya, and for the next two years, their fury would be known as the Dragon's Wrath. Aegon and Visenya would burn every Dornish castle, some more than once, all except for Sunspear. Some believe that they spared Sunspear out of fear for more scorpions and weapons to kill dragons, while others believed it was an attempt to turn the Dornish against the Martells. Many bounties were placed and assassinations done in this time, as well as many attempts on Aegon and Visenya's own lives as well. One close call on Aegon's life was stopped by Visenya herself and led to her pitching the idea of the Kingsguard, which was then officially established. Although Dorne was almost entirely in ruins at this point in time, they continued to fight on. Some resolution to the war finally came in the year 13 AC, when Maria Martell would ultimately die. The exact reason for her death is not stated in the books, so it likely could have just been old age. Her death followed with her son, Nymor Martell, becoming the new ruler and Prince of Dorne. Nymor did not wish to continue fighting his mother's war, and instead, he immediately sent his daughter, Daria Martell, and others to King's Landing as peace envoys. The group brought with them the Dragon Skull of Meraxes as a peace offering, as well as a letter to Aegon from Prince Nymor himself. Self. Aegon read and burned the letter that night, the contents of it never being known. Some theories suggest a letter told of Rhaenys' survival and torture at Hellholt, with a promise to stop if the fighting would end, with other theories suggesting Dorne being willing to hire the faceless men to assassinate Aegon's children. Regardless of the letter's contents, Aegon agreed to Nymor's proposal and signed a treaty of eternal peace, thus ending the first Dornish War after nine years of conflict. 
And there you have it, the first Dornish War in Westerosi history fully explained. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, leave a like, and maybe comment if you would like to see me cover the other Dornish Wars in the future. For more videos like these, we have plenty of other lore videos on the channel, so feel free to browse around. We also have a Twitter page now, at the Ravensall, so you can find us there. With all that said, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Ravensall.